Hello guys, you're welcome back again to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a dress which can be used for a wedding second dress, a reception dress, or an evening dress. And this video is going to be a collaboration with two other YouTubers. The first YouTuber is Mom That Sews, and the second one is Kwalumi Secret. I'm going to post a link to their channels in the description box, so you should try to check it out. Mom That Sews has already made an evening dress also on her channel. You can go there and check so many videos that she has there. And for Palumi Secret, the challenge was to make use of a challenging fabric. For me, I'm choosing sequin fabric to work with. So if you want to know which fabric she's going to be working with as well, head on to her channel to find that out. If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you haven't already because on this channel I post a lot of sewing tutorials so you don't want to miss out. Remember to turn on your notification bell as well. Without further ado, let's jump straight to the work table. In order to get started, I'm going to be drafting the down part of this dress first and I'm going to be making use of the pencil skirt pattern that I have a video on on my channel already. You can check that out in the description box. Please ignore this red curvy lines is for the hip padding video that I made. You can check that in the description box as well. So first I'm just uh, aligning this pattern onto a fresh pattern paper and I'm just tracing it out as you can see. So I'm tracing it out exactly the way it is. I also marked out the dot and once that is done, I am going to proceed to start working on it and I'm going to start by taking my skirt length so that's the measurement from your waist to your full length mine is 40 inches and i'm going to be adding 5 inches to that 40 inches making 45 inches you can add 3 4 or 5 or 6 depending on how much you want it to flow okay so from there i'm going to draw a straight horizontal line from that 45 inches and the next thing to do now is to draw a line from here all the way down but before you know where that line is going to touch you need to measure the down of your skirt that you are using of the pattern i have eight inches as you can see and i'm taking one inch out of that eight inches to make it seven and this is just to make my dress pencil very well so that's why i took out one inch then now i'm going to draw a straight line from here all the way down to that point all right and then i'm just uh, smoothing out this curve and once that is done i'm going to transfer my dart as well it's the same dart from the pattern so i just made it clear and i'm adding one inch seam allowance at the side i'm connecting that as you can see And I'm also adding half inch seam allowance at the waistline and at the down part as well at the hemline I'm adding half inch seam allowance as well and after that is done just go ahead and cut out your pattern so this now is the front pattern please make sure you do it on fold okay and now I'm moving to the back I have a fresh pattern paper that I already put my zipper allowance then I'm aligning the line of the zipper on the pattern to the line of the fresh paper and I'm just tracing it out just like I did for the front pattern and I also marked out my dart so next thing I'm going to be taking that same 45 inches this time around again just like I did for the front, 40 and additional 5 inches to make it 45. And I also transferred the 45 and I'm, all, I'm now going to connect with a horizontal line. And again, just like I did for the front, I'm measuring from my zipper allowance from that line. I have 8 inches and I'm going to be taking out 1 from that to have 7 and I'm going to be placing my 7 at my hemline. From that point, I will connect the straight line to meet up with my hip area, just like that, okay? And now I'm going to trace out my dart, okay? And then I'm adding the same one inch seam allowance at the side, half at the hemline and half at the waistline as well. And now my back pattern is ready and I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Take note that you have to have two pieces for the back pattern. And this is my front pattern, which is on fold. And when I open up the fold of the front pattern, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to set it aside and I'm bringing back my two back panel pieces. And what I need to do is to join them together, pretending as if I'm sewing them. 
Okay, so I'm going to be joining them together along the center back line. So I'm just using pin to secure them together, as you can see, along the center back line. And once I'm done doing that, it looks something like this. And when I open it up, this is what I have. Okay. And now I'm going to be bringing my uh, front panel and I will place it on top of now we are assuming this as the wrong side so you are going to place the right side to the right side okay so just pretend as if this is your fabric and we are going to be drafting out that cut out part okay so determine how high you or low you want the cut out to be from your waistline from my waistline i'm taking 10 inches okay so that's how high i want it to be so from that 10 inches just go ahead and freestyle the curve down to the hemline this way as you can see how i try to curve my hand just go ahead and freestyle first and then go ahead and um smoothing it out once you are done establishing the shape if you're satisfied just go ahead and smoothen it out okay and once you're done doing that go ahead and cut both of them together front and back and after i uh, cut both of them this is what i have okay and let me just show you how the back side is looking like this is what the back side is looking like so i'm just going to go ahead and remove the paint and separate my back pattern so i can cut my fabric and this is what one of the back panel is looking like it has a funny shape but don't worry that's how it should actually look like now i made use of this pattern that we just drafted to cut out my fabric and as you can see here is one of the back panels and i cut it just exactly the way i drafted it the only difference is i added half inch along this curved part for hemming allowance okay joining allowance sorry so add a half inch along that curve and to the uh, second back panel as well it's exactly same thing half inch along that curved area and for the yeah half inch along this part and for for the front half inch along the curved area as well okay and moving to my front have a video on how i drafted the pattern of this um upper part if you haven't seen it go and check it out so i made use of a mesh fabric a tool to cut out my yoke and i added half inch along this curve and along this part as well and to my uh bodies i added half inch along this part and half inch along this part as well and half inch along the dot and half inch along the dot as well okay this allowance of the sides and the waistline is already on the pattern go and check the pattern of this alter neck making i have it on my channel i'll post it at the end of this video or in the description box okay make sure you watch it so you can be in line with what we are doing in this video okay and for the back panel i also added half inch along the dart area as well and that's basically it and here is my color i am yet to cut it out i'm going to be showing you later how to cut that out so go ahead and use this main fabric to cut out lining for all of the um, patterns except the yoke and the collar okay so you are cutting lining for all of the patterns with this main fabric except the yoke and the collar all right now i'm going to be using this organza fabric to cut out my flounce and i have two yards of it so the first thing i'm doing is to find the center point of these two yards of fabric and in order to do that i folded it into four as you can see and i mark the center point as you can see and i'm also pressing this part so i can have a crease it's just to mark it it's nothing serious at this point okay and once i open it up i should see the point that i marked and the crease but it's not showing so i went ahead and uh, spread a different color of fabric on my table so that everything can become clearer for you guys to see and now you can see the point that i marked and on that point i'm going to draw a random cross so just go ahead and draw a random cross along that center point and then you can get a circular object you and then draw a circle the radius of the circle could be something from three inches two inches it depends so from that circle now i'm going to be taking 10 inches 
and i'm going to keep taking this 10 inches all around the circle starting from that circle i will take it all around 10 10 10 like that okay and this is me trying to draw out the first step of my ruffle i'm going to be having three layers of the ruffle so this is going to be the first step and this 10 inches is i'm going to be folding the flounce into two after cutting it out okay and um the 10 inches includes my seam allowance of half inch all right so just go ahead and keep taking the 10 inches around and i'm going to tell you where you're going to be breaking it where, where you're going to be taking something different so this is like an easier way of making a flounce so i'm connecting the points as you can see and for now i'm still keeping on to take the 10 so I'm taking it from that circle, I take the 10 and I'm going to connect those points as I go. And now, and now that I have gotten to this area, I'm not going to take 10 anymore. I'm going to start increasing it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take, say, 12. So I'm still taking it from that circle that I drew. From this circle, I took 12 and I'm going to increase it again to, let's say, 15. Take 15 and again i will take 18 at this point okay so and then i'm going to connect that and then let me just try to keep you on track this was where we started from right this was the first 10 inches that we took right that was the first 10 inches that we took and from that point now i'm going to take 10 so i'm starting from that bigger circle i'm taking 10 inches and i'll connect to that part where i stopped okay and from there i'm just going to keep on taking my 10 10 10 from the bigger circle not this inner circle anymore so i'm going to keep taking 10 from here all the way around through the circle and then i'm going to be forming something like a spiral Okay, so I'm taking it from the bigger circle. I will take my 10, 10, 10 around, like I said. Just keep on doing that until you exhaust all of the fabrics. Like I said, I'm working with two yards at this point, And this two yards is going to be just the top layer of my flounce. Okay, so I still kept on taking my 10. And once the fabric is finished, then I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out along the line. And you can see how I cut out this part and then i smoothing it out on that corner and that is my flounce all done this is what it, i have it's just a long long strip of flounce okay and for the end i'm just going to trim it off because that part is looking edgy so just trim it off and what i'm going to do now is to fold it into two like i said i intend to fold it into two that's why i took 10 and i know you may be wondering that it's not easy to fold the circular fabric but don't don't worry i'm going to show you how to do it so once you fold it's going to have excess so just go ahead and pleat anyone that has excess and as you're pleating make sure you're putting your iron on top of it and pressing it is going to help you a lot and pleat and press and pin and pleat and press and pin just keep on doing that all along the strip okay and it's gonna look like it's already forming a rough but yeah that's what we want to achieve with this flounce and once you're done doing that go ahead and stitch it by quarter of an inch this is what i have once i'm done doing that i stitch them together and i also overlocked the raw edges i use my regular sewing machine to do the overlock if you want to know how to do it i have a video on that as well on my channel i will link it in the description box okay and once i was done with that i went ahead and cut out the other two layers the same exact way the only difference was that i made the length two two inches longer you can make it three three inches longer like this one was 10 the next 12 and the next one 14 okay and then i also folded them the same way and i overlocked it the same way as well all right so now we are moving to joining of the bodies and now i have my front panel set this is my center front and these are my side panels and i'm going to be joining them together and i'm going to be placing the center front on top of 
one of the side panel right side facing each other like this and i'm going to be stitching by half of an inch all along the that leg and once i'm done i will open it up like this and i will place the second side panel on top of it as well right side facing and i'm going to stitch as well by half of an inch so once i'm done doing that this is what i have and the next thing i'm going to pick is the uh, side panel of the back and i will place it right side facing each other like this as well and i'm going to join by one inch because that's my side seam i left one inch side seam allowance so i will place the second side as well and join by one inch and then i will open it up right so once that is done this is what i have and the next thing to do is to bring in my center backs and i'm going to be sewing it but before i do that i'm just trying to check if i'm placing it in the right place let me zoom so you can see what i'm saying okay and as you can see it's going up but actually it should go down so it belongs to this side not that side so now it's going down and i hope you know what i mean so you can see how the angle is going so the next thing just place it right side facing like this and then stitch by half inch and do the same to the other side as well stitch by half inch all right let me just give you a quick tip right here because one of my subscriber was asking that uh if they make a bustier it doesn't usually come out right uh, I would recommend that whenever you want to stitch your dart area for your bustier, you should start from the waistline and sew upward, okay? Don't start from up and sew downward. Start from the waistline and stitch upward. That way, everything will come out nice, especially when you are sewing the bust area, this part, okay? So try that out and I hope it's going to work for you, okay? So let me just give you quick tips on working with the sequin fabric first don't iron directly on your sequin fabric place a cloth first and iron on top of that cloth with your uh, sequin fabric underneath and secondly try to have extra needles because your needles are going to break and sew gently second uh, thirdly now which is the most important try to get your stitches as accurate as possible once and for all so you don't have to take out stitches if you're taking out stitches a lot you are going to rip off your sequins and it's not nice all right so now i'm going to go ahead and stitch those right sides facing each other as well by half inch and once i'm done doing that this is what i have and as you can see everything comes out equal at the top and also at the down part as well everything is perfectly equal okay so before i proceed let me just give you one more uh tip on working with the sequin fabric because you know this fabric is so beautiful but it can be a pain in the ass okay so let me just go to the wrong side and show you if you want to flat iron your seam for example you can just first um press it with your finger you don't have to iron because you know try to iron avoid ironing as much as possible so in order not to always keep putting heat on top of it you can just use your finger to press down your seams as you can see me doing because the more you put heat the more the thread they use to sew your sequin can melt because they are actually in plastics in most of the sequin fabrics like the one i'm working with you can see mere pressing it everything is already okay right now all right so next everything you've done so far to your main fabric bodies you should do the same to the lining bodies as well so you can see i've joined it the exact same way all right and next up next i'm going to be joining the back panels together and i'm going to be placing them right sides facing each other along the zipper area which is the center back so go ahead and align them together like this and then you are going to be stitching from here all the way up but you will stop somewhere here leaving the zipper um, area opened and don't worry about this i'm going to be trimming it off all right and once i was done doing that this is what i have you can see the zipper opening like i said and now i'm bringing in my front panel and i'm going to be placing it right side facing each other and if your cutting was right you can see how mine is okay your curves should be at the same place <laughs> all right so then you should go ahead and transfer your dart and sew in your dart as well on both front and back pieces and then you can align them together like this and stitch by one inch from here all the way down and from here 
one inch as well and once i was done doing that and i turned it to the right side this is what i have up next i need to attach my yoke to my bodies and i have my lining here right side up so the right side is facing me and i'm going to be placing my yoke on top of it my yoke does not have right and wrong side actually because it's a mesh fabric so just place it on top and i'm going to be aligning it starting from the center and i'm going to pin it down together i need to place i'm supposed to place the main fabric as well but i'm not going to do three of them together at once i'm going to be setting aside my main fabric for now and i'm going to be joining the mesh and the and the lining together first and later i will bring in my main fabric so i'm just pinning it together starting from the center like i said and repeat the same thing to the other side and as you can see this fabric is really dark that's why you can see it so clearly but the match is there obviously so once i'm done pinning and i went to stitch it by half inch this is what i have and here is what it looks like on the wrong side as well you can notice that i have a little bit of flapping extension at this corner that's because i i just want my mesh fabric to be firm on my body that's why i put i i kind of brought it out a little bit when i was sewing that part okay so and i also hemmed the edges of my mesh by hand because i wasn't so comfortable with the way the machine was doing it okay so again let me bring it back to the right side so now i have the right side of my lining facing me and the yoke in between all right and now i'm going to be placing my main fabric right side facing the right side of the lining so place the main fabric and align right side to right side like i said and align starting from the middle align it and pin it all together and then you're going to be stitching by half of an inch but you're going to be leaving your uh, zipper allowance starting from here you stitch all the way by half inch and stop here okay leave your zipper allowance opened so once i was done doing that this is what i have you can also go ahead and top stitch on the lining if you want so next thing i'm going to be inserting a bra cup okay and i'm going to be making use of this circular bra cup i have uh, seen some subscriber ask me how do you know the size the right size of bra cup to use well i can't really tell because we are not the manufacturer but just if you know you have a big boss select a big one for me i'm using a small some of the bra cups in the market actually come with regular bra sizes labeling so if that is where you the one you're buying then you should choose your correct size okay so now i'm opening up my um bodies and i'm going to be placing my bra cup into the bra area obviously you can place it onto your lining or you can attach it onto your main fabric the choice is yours but if you are sewing it onto your main fabric then you should be extremely careful not to have stitches messing up your beautiful job you know so if you want to do that then you should do a thing called stitch in the ditch like someone told me what the name is so basically you place it and then you open up that seam allowance there and you will sew right onto the seam allowance that was what i did actually i've joined it as you can see and i joined it i chose to join it on my lining instead of the main fabric because i just don't want to mess up with my work it's gonna give the same effect okay so let me just zoom and show you what i did so i just placed the bra up onto the wrong side of my fabric you can see what it looks like on the right side of my lining it's looking so clean you can't even see the stitch because i placed the stitch right into the stitch of my dart so i made a stitch in the ditch right deep deep into the stitch of my dart okay so and on the inside this is what it looks like you can see that the stitch matches exactly with it aligns with the stitch of my dart so that's how i do it you can hand stitch it you can do it by machine but i did mine with the sewing machine okay so that's it and now i'm moving back to the skirt and we need to uh, introduce our ruffle so you need to go pleat your ruffle to be equal to this curved part so go and pleat your ruffle to be the size of that curved part and that's what i'm going to be doing right now i'm just placing the pleats randomly just pleat it randomly and pin and then you can secure the pleat with a, a straight stitch 
Once you're done pleating, the pleated length must be equal to the length or the size of that curved area in your skirt okay so try to measure around the curved area of your skirt and then you'll be able to determine how much pleats you're going to be having okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that all through the step this is the first step actually then i will do the same thing to the next step and to the third step as well so now i'm done pleating this is actually the longest step and now i'm done pleating it as well and what i'm going to do is to bring in the middle step which i've already pleated and i will align them together you can make use of your pins if things are trying to get messy actually but you know with experience i was able to make them cooperate with me you know <laughs> okay so now i'm also bringing in the last layer and once you have all of them together one two three layers go ahead and uh, secure them by um placing the straight stitch on a quarter seam allowance all right and once i'm done doing all of that i have my three layers as a single piece by now but it's still open-ended by now and now i need to place it onto my skirt and in order to do that you can find the midpoint of your um of your ruffles and just start from the up or if you are not finding the midpoint you can start from the down since it's still open-ended right now okay so now you're going to be placing the right side your right side is going to be where you have the steps and the wrong side is going to be where you have the longest face so i'm going to place in my right side onto the right side of my of my skirt and i'm matching the side seam onto one of the open-ended ruffle and i'm going to be placing i'm going to be matching them together and pinning all the way around okay and now that i'm done pleating i mean now that i'm done pinning them together i'm going to go ahead and stitch them together by half of an inch all the way around and now i'm done stitching it together and the next thing to do is to bring in your bodies and i have my bodies here and i'm going to be opening up the lining as you might have noticed that the bodies has a lining already but the skirt does not have the lining so at this point we are going to be attaching the main fabric of the bodies to the main fabric of the skirt and i'm finding the midpoint so place the midpoint of your bodies to the midpoint of your skirt and start pinning them together or around and then you will stitch by half inch all the way around and once i'm done doing that this is what i have and the next thing to do i'm just showing you the front you see how the front looks as well everything is just coming together i was so happy making this dress because mm -mm, Mm -mm. you know it's beautiful and i know it's beautiful <laughs> please give me a thumbs up for this tutorial guys all right so this is what i have at this point and the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in the lining of my skirt i call the skirt the down part so i'm sure you know that so here is the lining of my down part i also join it exact same way that i joined the main fabric i'm going to cut off this nonsense part that i don't want get behind me anyways so um i have my lining joined already the dart has been done but the zipper allowance is also opened like i did to the main fabric and now i'm going to be placing the lining to the lining lining of the bodies to the lining of the main fabric right side facing each other and i'm starting from the center notch and i'm matching all of them and pinning and i'm also going to make sure that every um dart and side seams and every thing is matching and once i'm done matching them i will sew all around my waistline by half inch and now i'm done doing that and this is what i have hmm. who's not going to be happy to have this kind of a dress gosh i'm so happy <laughs> so the next thing to do now is to make sure you attach the lining to the skirts as well along the ruffle side so i'm just turning it so you can see what i'm doing 
all right so right now here is the right side of my lining but i'm definitely not going to be sewing on this side i'm going to be going from here so i'll go from inside and um I am going to be matching the center back of the lining and the center back of the main fabric together. I'm I hope you can understand what I'm showing you. This dress is so big and you know it can't fit to my camera frame. So I hope you can follow what I'm doing basically. So I'm just going to be matching the center back of the lining to the center back of the main fabric like I said. Which I've already done here but I'm just going to take it out so you guys can see what I'm actually talking about. So I just matched those together and I'm going to keep matching starting from one side. I will match all the way up and then I will work my way down to the other side as well. So that by the time I'm done pinning them all around together the lining is going to be facing my main fabric so now i'm done um pinning this side together as you can see and i'm right here at the top and i'm going to keep pinning and pinning and pinning till i pin to the other side so as you're pinning try to tuck in all of the ruffles so that you know it can get out of the way by the time you need to sew on the sewing machine okay so here's what it looks like after pinning all around then i'm going to go ahead and stitch it all around by half inch now i'm done stitching as you can see and i'm going to be bringing it inside out through the zipper opening you know by now my zipper is yet to be attached to i mean um, the lining is yet to be attached to the zipper. So that is where I'm bringing it inside out from all right And once that is done, this is what I'm having and Okay, so the next thing to do now is to insert the zipper I'm gonna be using an invisible zipper which I have a video on how to fix it already on my channel You can check that out if you don't know how to do this correctly okay so i'm just pinning down my zipper and i'm going to go ahead and stitch it and once i'm done doing that this is what i have and as you can see i stitched the zipper on the main fabric only at this point my lining is still left alone right now okay so after that is done then i'm going to be combining the lining and i'm flipping it over to the main fabric this way and they are right sides facing each other then i have my zipper in between the both of them okay and once you're done flipping it over like that take it to your sewing machine and go ahead and stitch all the way down but if you have difficulty sewing it all the way down don't worry just hand stitch the rest okay next thing to do is to cut my collar and i'll be cutting on bias like i said so i'm not going to be placing it this way and i'm not going to place it straight like this i'm going to place it diagonally on my fabric like this even if you're making use of another type of fabric that is not stretchy if you cut it on bias like this it's going to work out fine for your collar okay so now i'm just going to go ahead and cut out this uh, exact shape because i already have my seam allowances drafted together with the pattern all right and once i'm cut uh, i'm done cutting it out i have something that looks like this and the next thing i'm going to do is to bring in my main fabric and i'm going to be measuring how much of the collar is going to actually be staying on the yoke okay so in order to do that i'm going to be I folded it halfway and I notched all right so I have my notch then I'm going to be starting from the notch of the yoke to the notch of the collar and I'm going to measure around this way so once I'm done measuring I'm just going to grab my scissors and I will use it to mark the part where the yoke ends and I will repeat the same thing to the other side as well I will measure all around like this then i will uh, notch on the collar where the yoke ends and once i'm done doing that i have two notches on my collar and that is going to uh, indicate for me where i'm going to start stitching so fold it into two and start stitching from that notch all the way like this and through like this and to the other side as well you start from that notch and stitch all the way like this and up like this by half inch all right so once i'm done doing that this is what it looks like and then the next thing to do is to trim off the excess because this is a uh, see-through fab uh, fabric that 
the similar ones these are going to be showing so you need to trim it off as close as possible but try not to cut off your stitch obviously all right so once i'm done trimming i have this and i'm going to turn it inside out and after turning this is what i have then you should go ahead and press iron it as well i have already done that but let me just show you quickly how i do it because this is a mesh fabric that can melt you know get burned so easily so when you want to iron such fabric just make sure you use an ironing cloth just place a piece of fabric on top of it and then just go ahead and iron i iron my sequin fabric the same way as well so those are three tips <laughs> So those are tips for you on working on difficult or you know fragile fabrics okay so now i'm going to be opening up that seam allowance and then i match the notch from the collar to the neckline then i'm going to pin it all around and after pinning it down i will take it to my sewing machine and stitch by half of an inch now i'm done joining and it looks something like this you can see that my um similar ones these are showing but don't worry i will show you how to cover those up later so once you're done then you should fold the other side over to the other side and go ahead and make a top stitch okay so i just folded it over as you could see from what i did and then i'm going to run a top stitch on top of it you can hand stitch as well whichever one comes cleaner for you okay and for my applique i have these two beautiful appliques which i was a bit confused which one could go with it let me know in the comment section which one you think is going to be perfect this one is 3d you know with 3d flowers and all of those details and the second one is beaded let me know in the comment section which of these appliques you think would be nice actually by the time i upload this video i would have made a choice already but just let me know okay I have a video on how to um, correctly attach applique to your dress so I'm not going to be going through that again in this video right check the description box it's totally loaded for you guys all right so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera quickly and I'm going to insert button at the end and once I'm done doing that that's basically the end I can't wait to show you the outcome of this beautiful dress guys Ta -da! <laughs> well it's not a surprise because we made it together right but oh my gosh this dress is so beautiful it's so gorgeous I, I had it for my christmas and i also made this little cute dress for my daughter as well you can see how so gorgeous we are looking try out this dress try it out i challenge you to try it out it's very easy as you can see but please please remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't share this video with your sweet mates that may need the video check the description box check it check it there are so many videos and let's meet again in my next one bye